Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video we did Slayer and we celebrated New Year's. Uh, we're currently working on 93 so we could unlock Thermi and the Occult Necklace and also still hoping for a Serb task along the way because since getting 91 Slayer I've not gotten a single Hecounds task yet. I just finished task number 400 so we got a nice little points boost there, 450 points because it was from Konar. And with that said, let's grab our next Slayer task, or our first Slayer task of the video from Duradel. I feel like the first task of the video always just sets the mood for the video, so let's see what we get. Some Gargalons. Looks like we have a defense level with 84. Got a nice little Kraken task here, and that's a KC milestone of 1800. Oh, look at this little Kraken stuck out here. He's like, I want to see my mommy. Meanwhile, this guy is just brutally destroying his mother over and over. It's probably better off that he doesn't know. Ooh, Dagonauts. Let's see what Spook's up to right now. I don't think I really quite yet have the gear to be able to solo Tribrid DKs, at least not comfortably. Like if I were to try to do them, I'd probably have like two of them up uh, a lot of the time, which is really stressful and annoying. Uh, mainly because of the upgrades that we don't have yet, like the Toxic Trident, having Rigor, for example. But because it's Group Iron Man, that means we can go together. Even though Spook doesn't really have the best combat stats because she hasn't really gotten too much into Slayer yet, I think this will be enough of a boost to the point where we can comfortably do DKs and not have to worry about like stressing out about the time of having two of them up at once or whatever. So we're gonna be heading over with Spook to do some DKs in just a bit. Right now she's just cooking and is about to eat but after that we're gonna be going over there and in the meantime uh, I still have to get 80 agility for the serve shortcut. I know I've said it so many times but I still haven't done like the, the last three or four hours of inefficient agility so I'm trying to work on this little by little when I can. While I'm running around here let me introduce you to today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet which is a smaller lighter and thinner version of traditional wallets and it doesn't have velcro. Even with how small the wallet is it can still hold up to 12 cards and you could choose between a strap or a clip for cash. As you can see, I personally have the clip here and I've never lost money. I've never been worried about losing money. It is very secure. And the wallet has built-in RFID blocking technology, which means you'll be safe from digital pickpocketers. To get your cards out of the wallet, it's very simple. All you do is just push into the Ridge. The Ridge team is so confident with their wallets that they offer a lifetime warranty on them. So if you buy a Ridge wallet, it is the only wallet you'll ever have to buy for the rest of your life. And on top of that, they offer free shipping and free returns and a 45-day money-back guarantee so you can try it out and see if it's for you. So check them out at ridge.com slash mudkip and take a look at their wallets. They have a wide variety of materials and designs, so I'm sure there's something for everyone. Ridge has a bunch of other products too besides just wallets. They have hats, cables, power banks, backpacks, and more. So again, that's ridge.com slash mudkip and make sure to use code mudkip at checkout for 10% off. And thank you so much again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. I'm just clearing out some bank space right now and I noticed the pendant of Lucian. I was looking at it really closely. Doesn't it look like you're wearing a bond almost? Like if you look at what a bond looks like, doesn't that look like really similar? I think I should at least have Addy darts for DKs. Maybe it won't matter because there's two of us, but I'm gonna make, this is all the Addy bars that I have right now and this is all the Addy darts I have right now, so we're running pretty low. Well, there is a Fletch level that is 72. Well, I can build the Ancient Altar in the POH right now, with, but then we won't have the Scepter for Pyramid Plunder in the future, so I don't know if you care about that or not. No. I guess we'll finally build the Ancient Altar, and that way we can save like five seconds switching spellbooks. Here we go, the Magic Stone, 975k, but... It's, it's going to be worth it for sure. Then we have to talk to Eblis to get the Ancient Signet, which we need to build the altar, which is free. And then I don't know if we can use a Charge Scepter, so we might have to use up the charges on it first. Let's see. Build altar space, and yes, we could build it. Here we go. Oh, this is going to save. I mean, like, it doesn't save a lot of time just using it once, but over the course of doing Slayer and constantly changing spellbooks back and forth, not only to switch to Ancients, but also to switch out of Ancients, or actually if I'm on Lunars or something too, you can, like, double use the altar as well to switch back to regular spellbook. The downside being, though, is that once we go back to Pyramid Plunder, it's going to take a little bit more time to actually do the activity and get the second scepter. So ideally we would have had a second scepter before building this, but I just, I've been wanting to build this for so long and I'm very glad that we have it now. Uh, if I get two more con levels to 84, we can guarantee a boost to 90 for the ancient altar, um, which is kind of expensive, but we should probably get those two levels just so we can have like the fully upgraded altar. We'll do that later. I just renovated the place. Could uh, try out my ancient altar, by the way. Won't drain your prayer. 
And then I should build the water birth telling in the POH. For now, we can just use the Lunar Isle portal and then get kicked off and then go to water birth. So let's grab stamina as well. I guess we could share one stamina pot because there's like little areas you could just stand around so we could like trade it back and forth. So we could like save you an inventory spot that way since I know you don't have the rune pouch. Are you ready? Looking like a couple of chads as always. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, this is uh, empty. And the, we have to go to the standard area because you're not on task. No. Okay, so we're gonna pray mage and then hit the ranger. Oh, it looks like, <laughs> did someone die here? Okay. Yeah, okay. wow, okay. Unlucky timing. Uh, Rex is right over there though. Okay, now let's go. Maybe I'll freeze him. Now just go back up, go back up, go back up. <laughs> okay, now let's try this, see if we can get them off tick. Okay, they're off tick, cool. Just gotta not aggro Rex. And then we'll be good. As long as they don't take a mage hit. Oh, there's Ral, no. Oh no. Uh, uh, uh. Seventh tries a charm, as they say, right? Here we go. Uh, You should be able to come in. Yeah, come in. Yay, we did it. And that's the elite task done for me. And I got elite clue as well, okay. Um, and then for Rex, there's there's a few different safe spots we could use. I'm just gonna bury the bones because I don't have the Elite Diary done, so I can't uh, let me get some uh, juicy herb lore XP here. We don't get the noted bones, but we could take him over to this spot over here. This is the ideal spot to get him in. Pray, pray melee if, <laughs> if you're running past him. And then yeah, you can turn off pray melee once we're in the safe spot. Uh, pray range now though, because Supreme just spawned. If there's one Dagnoth you do not want to take a hit from or have to take a hit from, is prime um, and then rex spawns like in the middle area so you want to like go north for prime so you don't aggro rex when he spawns and if we kill him quickly you can uh heal up on the spin ellipse in between yeah. or you can go heal up right now just make sure you get your uh prey mage up in time whenever there's like a lot of time in between i just don't use uh like the boosting prayer like piety or eagle eye depending on who it is sometimes i even just like stand around and wait <laughs> to do the last hit just because yeah, I mean, maybe you can get the kill here. Probably not. You got a kill. Sorry, I know I'm like stealing all the kills. How many prayer pots do you have? Eight, but like Pre one mage. more dose. Pre Just used up the last dose. <laughs> okay. Of that one. So now I just have eight prayer <laughs> potions. Okay, thanks for the update. <laughs> get ready to pray mage. Wow, we're so cool. <laughs> oh, there's 100 Rex Casey. Yes, the first Dragon Axe, that's so good. I'm so glad we got something. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Now let's get another. Okay. We'll use our YouTuber luck to just choose to get one. Oh, we got we got a ring. Not really useful at all, but <laughs> it's cool to see stuff at least. We know they exist. Okay, we'll take a bead ring now. Thank you. Yeah, it's a bit annoying here because you can't really trade items. I'm pretty sure we'd have to like drop it and then wait a minute for it to spawn for the other person. Uh, I'll drop a prayer pot in the wreck safe spot over here. So hopefully by the time we get over there, it'll be spawned for you. Watch someone just like comes down and yoinks it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dragnax number two. Yeah, I, I would already call it a very successful trip at this point. That's so good. We each have our own DX now. And then any future Dragon Axes would just be for if we get like a Smoldering Stone for uh, more Infernal Axe charges. Oh, Syracle, that's so good for the Elite Diary step. It took me so long to get that on the UIM. But now we're uh, set for that on <laughs> the group. That was back to back as well, the Dragon Axe into the Syracle. Oh, oh, there it is, dude. It's beautiful. I guess you can <laughs> teleport now then if you're out of prayer. I can't do all three of these solo, like we were just struggling with the both of us to get them down in time, so after I kill Prime, I'm just gonna stay here to just like use up the rest of my antidotes, only killing Rex, and we'll see if we get lucky here. Oh, you, you got a series ring! Does that mean, did you get a diary task uh, done? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, I'll just, I can nice. pick up the series ring. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's not useful, but I guess we can both use a series ring, so... Oh, well, that's cool. Imagine you're like a normal iron, you just teleport out and you don't get the drop. <laughs> like, I guess you wouldn't have finished off the kill then unless it was poison, but anyways. Oh, there it is. There's the series ring. Can I pick it up without getting aggroed? 
Okay, I don't care about the bones. Okay, now we're good. We're just chilling in the safe spot. Uh, like I said, until we run out of antidote and we'll see if I can snag a Sabi ring. Imagine you got a pet there and not the series ring and like you teleport home and you're just like running around the GE and then suddenly a pet spawns behind you. <laughs> That would be great. Uh, actually, it really wasn't that bad. I I, I guess I kind of just feel bad because you weren't really getting any kills. But if you were like you were doing enough DPS to the point where like having there allowed us to be able to do DKs because I wouldn't be able to try for them if it was just me. Oh, I wasn't even looking. We got a dragon axe. Um, I guess this one's not as useful, but a <laughs> third DX. Cool. Congrats. I am all out of antidote. I kind of forgot. I should have asked Spook to drop her last dose or two for me. But anyways, this is going to have to be the last kill and... <gasps> Look at the chat. Look at the chat. Congrats. <laughs> no way. Oh, what? Oh. Oh my. <laughs> I was like, okay, last kill. <laughs> Can't oh. believe you've gotten two pets and I don't even have one yet. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I, I just. How dare you? I, I shouldn't have chosen to use my YouTube luck to get that. Dude, that is, that is freaking wild. Um, This is my first time ever getting a DK's pet on any account. They're one out of 5k, and I probably have. I don't know, probably like 3k KC across accounts on all DKs maybe. Maybe even less than that, I don't know. Let's uh, let's use the pet on Forbida. One shirt for 500k. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> That's freaking insane. That's actually so insane. Should have a spook kill Rex now, I don't want to get a second pet. I wonder how many group Ironmen have the Rex pet at this point. It's probably somewhat common because, you know, a lot of Ironmen camp Rex for like 100 or 200 KC or even more uh, to get that first B ring. So it's probably not like a super rare pet for group Ironmen, but still freaking insane to me. Because, I don't know, just the last thing I was expecting. Oh wait, what was that? Something about shaking him for B-rings. What if I endlessly killed your father for weeks on end, but I get a B-ring then? Been done by someone, no. One day I will get a B-ring. Wait, yeah, wait. I just realized I got the pet before the B-ring, huh? Let's look at uh, Dagnoth Kings. Rex pet, no B-ring. Last kill of the DK's trip, we got the pet, but also the first kill of the trip, we got an elite clue and we got the casket from it. There's really not much too special we could get from elites, they're usually pretty trash, but we'll see if we get any uniques here. That's about what I thought. Oh uh, yes, preparing me my celebration meal <laughs> of all the, the pets I've stolen from you. I saved this for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm just gonna be doing some agility while I'm eating dinner tonight so we can get 80 for the serve shortcut as I'm sure you all know by now. Um, but I just wanted to mention that I don't keep the pets out after I get them until the video goes up. So like, cause you know, it's like a few days behind before the videos actually go up. So it doesn't spoil it for people in game. There's someone at this course actually that I think also had the Rex pet and I thought it was mine for a second, but it's not. Um, and then also if you're curious what's for dinner, uh, we made this stir fry and by we, I mean it was mostly spook, but I don't know if the, my webcam actually does it justice, but it's very good. Okay, we're finally about to get the level. Is it gonna be when we go up the thing here? Yeah, there we go, level 80 agility. We are done at the Sarah's rooftop course probably forever because while it is like decent XP, when you're 20 levels above the level requirement for that course, you get 20% of the marks that you would normally get, which makes this just like really, really not worth it. For future rooftop agility training, I'll be doing the Relic, of course, at least for Marks of Grace. Um, of course, there's always the Priv course once we unlock that. I think a lot of people don't like the Relic, of course, but I don't mind it. Anyways, I finally finished procrastinating getting this last agility level, so now I'll be able to use the shortcut and I can stop reminding you every video that I need to train agility for the serve shortcut. I remember earlier when I finally built the ancient altar in the PLH and I was like, oh, we could train more construction for the occult altar. The only reason why I didn't build the occult altar a long time ago is because I just didn't want to use the Pharaoh Scepter yet, but now we have the ancient altar built. Everything else that you need for the occult altar, you can essentially just buy with GP. So at this point, the only thing that we're actually missing to be able to build it is the construction requirement.
requirement, which is level 90, but we can get the guaranteed plus six boost. So we can just get to level 84. Although if we get one more level, if we get to 85 instead of 84, we can get the guaranteed plus six boost for the ornate jewelry box. And I was doing the math to get each con level for 84, it'd be 1900 teak planks. Uh, doing mahogany homes for 85, it'd be 3k teak planks. And then I was just curious how much I would need for 99 construction, and that would be 38k teak planks. Each teak plank will cost 500 GP in sawmill fees, plus whatever uh, the butler charges to, so just add on a little bit more for that. So theoretically, if I wanted to go for 99 con, we're looking at about 20 million GP for that, but yeah, we'll go for 85. That's gonna be like just over 1.5 mil, so like 1.5 to 2 mil GP for that. Now we just actually need the teak planks. Uh, right now we have pretty much none, so let's go check kingdom. Double checking the allocation, we got it all on herbs and then half on teak. So let's go ahead and collect resources. 3.9k teak logs, nice. And then it's a lot of herbs. Oh, look at all the ranners, that's so nice. Just to show you how this method goes, even though I've shown it in previous videos, I know not everyone watches every single video, so we grab our teak logs out the bank, teleport to the POH, house options, call servant, have him bring the teak logs to the sawmill for the fee, and then we teleport back and grab more logs. And because we're not in the POH when he comes back with the planks, uh, they automatically go to the bank. So we don't have to like wait to collect them from him or anything. And this method is like 5K teak planks per hour. So I'll have to do this for less than an hour. Bro, there, dude, I, I, <laughs> I literally just did this rooftop laugh because I've just been doing this for hours and it was like my muscle memory. I can't believe that just happened. All right, it is a brand new day and I just finished making all the planks. If we look in the bank, you could see almost 4,000 teak planks. I mean, we only need like 3K, but I'm gonna have to make a bunch more for the future anyways, so there we go. For Mahogany Homes, I already have the full outfit. I have the plank sack. I do still have to be on the regular spell book because I need to actually teleport around everywhere so I won't be able to use NPC content. Contact. And then once I get the ornate jewelry box built in the POH, I'll be able to use the Falder Park teleport, and that'll be a really fast way to get here. Uh, let's see how many points we have already. Okay. Still need to unlock the saw and the blueprints. Because of the Christmas event, I have to talk to him about other things in order to get the homes done. Wow, dude, I picked literally the worst time to do mahogany homes. Looks like I have enough points to buy the saw now, so we'll buy Amy's saw con for a new collection log slot. And this is just a saw that you can equip. I guess I could save an inventory spot if I equip that and then just put dust runes in my rune pouch, but... I don't really care that much about saving one inventory spot. There's 83 construction and there's 84 construction. I just clicked on this random and I don't know if this has always been here, but I've never noticed there's this little thing that says key and you could click on it and it tells you what each of the things are. Maybe that's always been there. I don't know, but I've never seen that. That's cool. Okay. I think this is going to be the level right here. 85 construction. There it is. You could tell by the XP tracker up there. I've been doing this all day. It's been like eight hours of construction today to get this level, plus the time making the planks as well. This is kind of mildly satisfying too. I did 250 contracts today, giving me 100 points earned today. Anyway, it's time for a birdhouse run. For the occult altar, if you already have one of the altars built, you're basically just upgrading it. So you add the things that you would need from the other altars. So things we need are going to be 5k blood runes, 5k soul runes, uh, and then just the two signets, which are pretty much free or very, very cheap. And then we need 10,000 astral runes. So we'll grab like, I guess 5K out of here and then we'll buy 5K more. Just spent about 500K buying astral runes. And then we also have to buy the lunar signet, which is two GP. And the last thing that we need is the Archaea signet, which I guess is just a souvenir. I think it's free. Yeah. All right, let's go build it. This is it. Let's pour the cup of tea, drink up and then upgrade. Yes. Oh, look at that. It's so nice. And with this, we could switch to any spellbook anytime and then also switch back to the regular spellbook anytime. This is so freaking sick, dude. Such a nice upgrade. Now we have one more thing to upgrade and that is going to be the jewelry box. Uh, the thing that we need though is eight rings of wealth charged, uh, which is five charges for the rings of wealth. And the only way they can charge these up is at the Fountain of Rune in the Wildy. You can't use those charged Dragonstone scrolls on it. You can't go to like the Heroes Guild or Myths Guild. You could only charge them at the Fountain of Rune and it gives five charges. Oh look, I don't even have to use any crystal keys. We just already have the eight Dragonstones. Just gotta chisel these. Wait, no, not even that because I know Kraken drops Dragonstone rings. So I might already have a few of them in here. So. Somewhere. 
Oh, <laughs> we have 16 of them. <laughs> so we'll use the Occult Altar and the POH to switch over to the Ancient Spellbook. We'll uh, use the Anakarl Teleport. I don't have my cash stack on me right now. And hopefully we don't die right away to a clan. Nice. I know kind of recently Poison Potion made a video at the Obelisk here doing like a money making method. So hopefully it's not camped. I mean, it's been like a week or a couple weeks now at this point. Oh, he's over here. Yeah, over here. Okay. We'll just use that on it, I think. And there we go. Let's grab our chips and dip on out of here. We're so close to freedom. Yes, we made it. Cool. Imagine there actually being PKers in the Wildy. Psh, everyone knows the Wildies for Iron Men. And then we also need the eight Amulets of Glory, which I have a few already, but I can't actually make them myself. I need Spook to make them because I'm pretty far away from the crafting level. So I'll put these Dragon Stones in here and I'll have her make those into Glories. And I got to buy two Gold Leafs, which I think are like 130k each. Let's just quickly come down here. We'll charge up the Glories. We need 91 construction to be able to upgrade this. So with the T, we are boosted to 88 plus Plus the invisible plus three boost from the saw and there it is the ornate jewelry box another very very nice upgrade and this adds the last teleports to it which are all the teleports from the ring of wealth and all the teleports from the glory uh, which means i guess i don't really need to have the mountain glory although it is a lot more convenient than like having to go through here and then like search for the one unless it's like the last one you went to but well maybe i could get rid of the glory because then i can move that room over here and i'd have the myth cape for faster access anyways we made some really nice upgrades today and by getting our construction up a few more levels uh, we now have the construction requirement to be able to build the ornate pool like just using the guaranteed boost only thing that we are missing is the 10 anti-venoms that you need which requires 87 herb lore or 83 with the guaranteed pie boost uh, for the last few days spook's been thieving master farmers and doing constant farm runs so she'll very soon be getting her herb lore up so ideally it'd be really nice for her to get to 83 herb lore so we'll see how far she gets herb lore up this week that's gonna be it for today though if you want to check out spook dog's videos her channel channel link is in every video description. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again next time.